Hello everyone, in this video we are going to discuss primary amenorrhea. The concept behind amenorrhea and how you understand how to investigate the patient and how you how is your approach toward this primary amenorrhea patients. I have already have videos in these channels regarding the various diseases in which primary amenorrhea happens. So I would like to uh, I request you to see that video first I have link in the description so first see that video and then come to the this thing now amenorrhea literally means absence of menstruations and what is primary amenorrhea when the patient have never been uh, menses since the birth what is secondary amenorrhea when the patient started having regular menses and then suddenly she stops the menses there is secondary amenorrhea for three months okay so amenorrhea happens before puberty after menopause in pregnancy and lactation before puberty we can call it primary amenorrhea and this we can call it secondary amenorrhea so primary amenorrhea what is definition there is no menses in the 13 year old girl with no secondary sexual characteristics and there is no menses in a 15 year old girl with secondary sexual characteristics what are the secondary sexual characteristics of female breast development female like voice axillary hair pubic hair all these things is the secondary sexual characteristics now why we have a difference in this definition because we know that there is no secondary sexual characteristics and along with there is no menses so there is something very 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 problematic is there with this person so we try to uh, investigate that patient earlier then those the patient who have secondary sexual characteristics because you will know in few uh, in this video that the secondary sexual characteristics that is breast development requires estrogen and progesterone female voice require estrogen progesterone pubic and axillary hair require androgens so if we have secondary sexual characteristics we are okay that yes there is some estrogen and progesterone maybe some another problem happening that's why the menses is not coming so we just want to wait for two years if the secondary sexual characteristic is there if after two years even the patient does not have that menses then we have to investigate the amenorrhea now I am talking about the very basic concept never ever uh, discuss in the in the routine those uh, traditional classes that is for a menses a female wants menses then what is required what is the basic requirement for menses first of all we require a uterus a uterus having responsive endometrium a uterus having good responsive healthy endometrium responsive to what cyclical estrogen and progesterone along with the clear outside uh, pathway to outside that is outflow tract we need these three things for menses do we need ovaries for menses do we need suppose if some patient have no ovary or suppose if the if some patient the ovaries are removed for some disorder of ovary let's say tumor of ovary then it's not possible for a female to have menses yes it is possible if you give the estrogen progesterone from outside if you give estrogen and progesterone as a medication then this patient can actually menstruate 
Why? Because for menstruation we don't require ovary. We require estrogen and progesterone. But ovary produces the estrogen and progesterone cyclically. That's why we require ovary in menses. But if the ovary is not there, if you give estrogen progesterone from outside also, then also the patient will have a menses. But for menses, you need first of all is a uterus with responsive endometrium. And a clear pathway, there should be no outflow obstruction. Okay, so these three things are the very basic thing for menses. And if we don't have this menses, we need to investigate some uh, some symptoms or some things. Now, <clears throat> if you see here, cyclical estrogen progesterone will be provided by this sequence. Hypothalamus will secrete GnRH to pituitary. Pituitary will secrete estro uh, FSH and LH GnRH agonist. FSH and LH and this will act on ovary. Ovary will in term of response to FSH and LH will produce estrogen and progesterone. This estrogen and progesterone go and act on endometrium and endometrium will shed and regenerate and degenerate so this will have a menses so this is the basic pathway now traditionally something you need to understand but before this thing i want you to tell one thing more that the uterus along with the endometrium is a product of mullerian duct you must remember that mullerian duct produces the uterus and if you can just imagine for a second, it is odd I know, but if you want to just imagine, to just remember that think this Mullerian duct as an irritating guest. Until and unless you don't stop this guest, this guest will come to your home. You need to stop that guest. So Mullerian ducts needs to be inhibited by AMH, anti mullerian hormone, secreted by the Sertoli cells. And the Sertoli cells is present in testis. And testis will be only developed when there is a Y, micro, y chromosome is present. So if we don't have AMH, then the mullerian duct will be there. Whether it is a male or female, the Mullerian duct does not care, it just care about AMH. If you don't have AMH, even if you are a male, but you don't have good testis which or with Sertoli cells, they can produce you, they cannot produce enough AMH and this will lead to Mullerian duct development. So now there is a traditional way to understand primary amenorrhea. I don't like this traditional way, but again the questions asked according to this traditional way of explanation of compartments, so called compartments. So we have to discuss like that here. So again. The CNS, the central nervous system, that is brain, will send messages to the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus in turn uh, generates the GnRH agonist. And this GnRH agonist will go and act on pituitary. So pituitary will generate FSH and LH. FSH and LH will be generated. This will go and act on ovaries and on ovaries will in turn generate estrogen and progesterone. They will act on uterus, endometrium and uterus will have a clear cut outway of, uh, outflow pathway. Here GnRH agonist is not there. Sorry, they are will be. Uh, it's called. Um, I don't know something it's called the hypothalamus secret something that go into the pituitary okay 
इट्स कॉल्ड जी आर एच सॉरी जी आर एच गोनेडोट्रोपिंग रिलीजिंग हॉर्मोन एंड इट्स नॉट जी एन आर एच एगोनिस्ट इट इज द ड्रग वी यूज वेन वी हैव टू इंड्यूस एफ एस एच एन एल एच सॉरी फॉर दैट नाउ लेट सी द कंपार्टमेंट डिविजन यूट्रस हैज बीन गिवन द कंपार्टमेंट नंबर वन ओवरीज आर गिवन द कंपार्टमेंट नंबर टू Pituitary in term given the compartment number three, and the hypothalamus and CNS given the compartment number four. So in this first compartment, there is some problem in this compartments. So this will lead to primary amenorrhea. So what are the problems in each compartment? So when we see that there is a problem in compartment number one. what that means that means the uterus and the outflow tract so what are the compartment number 1 problems that is mullerian anomalies in which mullerian duct anomaly is there uterus is either not formed half formed cervix is not formed in those types of problems primary amenorrhea happens so mullerian anomalies is there outflow pathway obstructions like imperforated hymen is there and another syndrome is a testicular feminization syndrome in testicular feminization syndrome the patient is genotypically a male 46 xy so again i have already told you 46 xy will have a testis and this testis will secrete amh and wherever there is a amh mullerian duct cannot come so mullerian duct are not there so there is no uterus and because of there is no uterus there is no menses but this 46 xy person is identified as a female that's why the patients come to you as a female that's why you are investigating its primary amenorrhea otherwise your normal male can don't come to your clinic for primary amenorrhea because it's a testicular feminization syndrome she is coming to you now the compartment number 2 problems the problems with the ovaries these are gonadal dysgenesis in which gonads that means ovaries are not developed well or even testis are not developed well so gonadal dysgenesis there is a turner syndrome which is a most common cause of primary amenorrhea in which there is a strict gonads so ovaries are very strict pure gonadal dysgenesis is there if you see the genotype it will be 46 xx there is a female the female is there the genuine female is there but the ovaries are not well developed there is another syndrome called swayer syndrome in which the genotype is 46 xy but in 46 xy also they don't have a good amount of testicular tissue so there will be no testosterone so the person will be identified as a female and there is no testicular tissue so there will be no amh and if you don't inhibit those irritating gas that is mullerian duct the mullerian duct development will be there in swayer syndrome even the genotype is male so this swayer syndrome person have a uterus well formed uterus but again they don't have ovaries and they don't have a source of estrogen and progesterone that's why they have they have a primary amenorrhea pituitary problems in which they cannot secrete enough fsh lh gonadotropins in case of neoplasia hypopituitary status this will called compartment number 3 problems kalaman syndrome is a compartment number 4 problem in which the hypothalamus is not sending the right messages that is releasing hormones to the pituitary so with the kalaman syndrome also primary amenorrhea happens so these are the traditional way of understanding the primary amenorrhea 
now i will talk about very important aspect of diagnosis how you diagnosis or how you answer any question about amenorrhea it's very practical it's not just like theoretical whenever the patient comes to you that i have a amenorrhea whether it is a primary or secondary ultrasound is the now the stethoscope new stethoscope for gynecologist first investigation you would like to do is ultrasound because it is readily available and it's not harmful and it can be done very easily and even reproduced so ultrasound is a new stethoscope for gynecologist so you would like to go for ultrasound instead of those hormonal profiles and like that no you don't do this thing you do ultrasound the first investigation you do is ultrasound remember if in case in some some cases a very remote areas where the ultrasound is not available then you do a rectal examination and what is the purpose of doing this ultrasound and rectal examination identify the mullerian structures that is uterus if the uterus and mullerian duct structure are present then you are very sure that the, the guest has arrived why the guest has arrived because there is no inhibition so amh is not there amh produced by sertoli cells of the testis so either there is no testis or there is testis but not working so this two differentiating in these two methods we have another now readily available investigation that is karyotype karyotype is also now readily available so we don't go on those very difficult hormonal profiles and like that we just go for karyotype karyotype will understand what uh, what the real genetic thing is there if it is 46 xx that means it is genotypically a female but still there is no testis uh, it is a female and obviously there is no testis okay so why it is happening the ut- uterus is there the person is a female then why menses is not coming because it comes the compartment number 1 is fine so the things goes to compartment number 2 that is ovary problems pure gonadal dysgenesis is there the gonads ovaries are not well developed or sometimes outflow tract obstruction so it is a female completely now if you got the karyotype 45 xo then it's a diagnostic of turner syndrome you don't need to do any other test for diagnosis then comes if the person's uh, karyotype comes 46 xy remember 46 xy means she is a genotypically a male but again she is identified by the society as female then you have only two options which are two options endogen insensitivity syndrome and swayer syndromes but in the endogen insensitivity syndrome there is there is a uh, testis there is testis well working testis is there so if the testis is working then amh is there so amh will not allow to produce the uterus so only one option is there swayer syndrome so if the karyotypes come to 46 xy then we can diagnose the swayer syndrome is there you are right now if see if you do your usg and if you don't identify any uterine tissue uterine structure or mullerian duct structure what is that mean that amh is present now that's why we don't have a mullerian duct okay so if the amh is present then there should be a testis 
and if we do a karyotype in this thing we only can identify that there is a 46 xy in which the 46 xy will make that the person is a male and the person don't have even uterus but still it is identified and secondary sexual characteristics are there of female so it is a diagnostic of androgen insensitivity syndrome one condition is there that if the testis is even not uh, present and if the uterus is even not present then there is one possibility of MRKH that is uh, Mayer Rokitansi Kuhar syndrome uh, owner syndrome so this MRKH syndrome in which there is a complete Mullerian dysgenesis so the karyotype will be again 46 XX so if you see that that the that the female do, don't have uterus despite of being a female then you should go with the MRKH so it's a very easy thing that first investigation is ultrasound and the second investigation is karyotype the, this both investigation will generally identify most of the problems then comes to the secondary sexual characteristics for secondary sexual characteristics of female you need a some uh, some factors like for breast development you need estrogen progesterone and for estrogen progesterone you need ovaries or it can be formed from another hormones like testosterone the female voice you need it will be done by estrogen progesterone the pubic and axillary hair you need it is done by androgens so now you see uh, how the pubic and axillary hair are developed if there is no pubic and axillary hair absent pubic and axillary hair then you can diagnose that is androgen insensitivity syndrome because androgen is there but cannot act so diagnosis is androgen insensitivity syndrome if there are present that means you are heading towards the MRKH because you see that that the person is of 46 XX the female there are secondary sexual characteristics also there but still you don't have a uterus in that thing why there are ovaries also so your diagnosis will become MRKH if there are sparse and uh, hair that means not enough to be called absent so pubic hair are spares so in which you will identify that it is a it may be Turner syndrome it may be gonadal dysgenesis it may be Swayer syndrome and it can be Kalaman syndrome also in those things you will I uh, have a sparse axillary hair so this is the very basic thing for investigation and understanding the primary amenorrhea i have described each and every syndrome in previous video just go for that video first thank you